splish splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. By now, hopefully you have a copy of the 2010-2011 Rules of Golf. If you don't, stop by the golf shop. We've got a copy for you. I'm out here on number 6 South today. I'd like to talk about Rule 26-1. That's a rule that affects all players, unfortunately, because we've all hit it in the water from time to time. 26-1 is how to proceed if your ball lies in a water hazard. Now, we play our hazards at Toscana as lateral hazards. Therefore, there's five options. I'm going to talk about those options, and this is a great spot to do it. Your first option is always to play the ball as it lies. Here at Toscana, that's really not an option because we don't want you to play off the lake or off the creek bed. We don't want to damage the line. The second option is you could go back to the point where you last played and replay the shot, just like you would for a lost ball or out of bounds, stroke and distance. The next option is you may proceed like you would for a water hazard, a yellow hazard, which is the point where your ball last crossed the margin of the hazard you can drop on a straight line, keeping that point and the flag in a straight line as far back as you'd like to go. Sometimes that's a viable option, sometimes it's not. Now those first three options are appropriate for water hazards, yellow stake hazards, or lateral hazards, red stake hazards. All the hazards at Toscana are red stake hazards, okay? You have two more options in a red or a lateral hazard. The first is I can take the point where my ball last crossed the margin of the hazard, I can drop two club lengths within that spot, within, uh, from that point, drop the ball and play it. Now here on number six where I am, that's maybe not the best option. I'm going to show you why. The margin of the hazard is where the water level is at normal lake or creek level. So the margin of the hazard is here. I'm going to drop my two club lengths. Okay. I've got a rough area that I have to drop somewhere within. If I drop this ball, now I'm a right-handed golfer, if I drop this ball and it rolls down towards the hazard like it did, that ball's in play. I have to stand in the hazard to play it. That's maybe not my best option. If I was a lefty, I could probably hit it, but not as a right-hander. This is where the fifth option comes in, and this is where knowing the rules can really help you. I'm 170 yards from the hole here. The fifth option on a lateral hazard says that I may play the ball equidistant on the opposite margin of the hazard. So guess what? I can go on the other side of the creek, 170 yards from the hole, and play the ball. Let's see if that's the best option. Okay, so now you can see I'm on the opposite side of the hazard. I've determined my point that's 170 yards from the hole, equidistant from the point my ball last crossed the margin of the hazard. <clears throat> I'm going to proceed you know, to take my two club lengths. Normally I would mark it with a T and, and do all the procedural things as it, you know, if I was playing in a tournament or something, but it, it's a friendly game and I know that I'm within the two club lengths here. So now, when I drop my ball, even if it bounces towards the hazard a little bit, now unfortunately I got a crummy lie there, but even if it bounces towards the hazard a little bit, as a right-handed golfer, I can still hit this and the hazard's not gonna come into play. I don't have to stand in the hazard. So knowing the rules, knowing what your options are, can actually benefit you in this situation, even though it's going to cost you a stroke for hitting it in the hazard. You remember last season's picture quiz? Can anybody tell me where I am right now? I'll give you a hint. It's a new drop area. Well, if you've been here this summer, you probably recognize this location. If not, I'm on number 7 South, as you can see. This is the new drop area we built. It's right in front of the ladies' tee box. It's roughly 85, 90 yards from the green. So now, if you hit it in the lake on number 7, you don't have to go back and re-tee. You can play from the new drop area, cost you a stroke, but you got a shorter wedge shot to get it on the green.